Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Art Center's new series, Art Inspiration, where each week I will show you works of art from a different artist, and we will draw inspiration from them and use them as like a jumping off point to create our own work of art. Today, the artist's name is Hokusai. He's from Japan, and you probably are familiar with his most famous painting, The Great Wave. Now, Hokusai lived a long time ago, about in the 16, 1700s. And back then, the only paintings that were being made were of royalty. The emperor's house, the emperor's wife, the emperor's dogs, the emperor's horses. Hokusai was the first artist who started doing the everyday life of the people of Japan. And it's largely through his works that we have a window into the world of Japan during a period of time when no one was allowed into Japan. It was called the isolationist period. So Hokusai, through his art, taught us a lot about what Japan was like. Let's take a look at some of his works of art. This is his famous painting, The Great Wave. You've probably seen it on sushi restaurants. It's very popular with sushi restaurants. And you can see Mount Fuji in the background. Now, he put Mount Fuji in a lot of his paintings. This is the one that he is most known for. He did a lot of different versions of this painting. And when we go down to here, these people are washing their horse. Now, I did own a horse, and yes, you do have to wash them from time to time, but this was not a scene that was typically portrayed by the artist that were working in his time because it was just what the everyday people did. Here we have another one of his artworks. I think it's important to note that a lot of his pictures are vertical, his paintings are vertical. And a lot of them have waterfalls in them where he really maximizes the vertical format of his painting by using the waterfall. If we come up here, we can see another waterfall painting. And these people are having a picnic next to the water. So again, a painting about everyday life. This has got no royals in it, no emperor, and it's a long vertical format. Especially this one here is a really long format, like a banner in a way. And you can see these are landscapes. That means a picture of anything that's outside. And our last picture I'm gonna show you is of the rice fields. And you can see how the people that are close to us are bigger and the people that are farther away are smaller, and there is our Mount Fuji, ever present in a lot of his pictures. There's a fascinating story about Hokusai. A call went out to the land where the emperor was looking for a new artist. Many people wanted this job. Many artists wanted this job. It was a great job. So and the, on the appointed day, all these artists showed up, and they were all carrying their, their best paintings that they had worked a long time on. But Hokusai showed up with three unusual items. A chicken, a bucket of paint, a couple of buckets of paint, one red, one blue, and a big long sheet of paper. So everyone's looking at him like, what's he doing? So he rolls out the paper. When the, when the emperor asked to see his artwork, he rolled out the paper, he planted a blue line all the way down it, and then he took the chicken and he dumped his feet into the red paint and let his chicken walk all the way up and down his piece of paper. And he called it red leaves in the spring. So this is, and he got it. He got the job based on that. And you can only imagine how everyone else was probably scratching their head. What just happened? How did a guy with a chicken get this job? So that's a fun story I like to tell about Hokusai. This is what we're going to be making today. It's a landscape and it's going to be vertical or portrait. That means it goes this way. Let's look at this for a minute. Here I have Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji is a dormant volcano that is visible from a lot of different places in Japan. And then I have a line here. This line shows me where the land starts being flat. So I know that I'm walking on flat land until I get to here, and now I'm going to have to hike up to the top of Mount Fuji. I put a river in my picture, but look, my, ridge, my river is very skinny here. And look how fat it gets at the bottom. This tells me this is far away. And this is close to me. I put some little, a little garden of some sort growing in here. I put a little row of trees back there. And then I made a house. Now, do you see the roof line of my house kind of curves a little bit like that? 
That's one way that we can tell Asian architecture, is by a little bit of bow and that. They also sometimes have these really cool round doors. And then I put in a tree. Of course, my sun, some clouds, and my landscape is complete, inspired by the artist Hokusai. I don't know, I think we have enough information to start our picture now. All right, let's begin our drawing. As always, the horizon line is the most important draw part of the line that you start with. Now, I'm going to make mine nice and high. Now, remember, it's a dormant volcano. So Mount Fuji kind of looks like that. Now, I'm going to put this line in. Remember, I said this was the line where it stopped being flat and started having to hike up Mount Fuji. And I'm going to put my little tree line in here. It just is a nice way of transitioning from the flats to the mountain. And remember, every, two, every trees are different, so don't just make them all look alike. Now I'm going to put in my river. So I'm just going to do a nice free form and little line like that, real quick. And now my second line is the one that matters. I have to start small, and look how I'm gradually, gradually getting wider. Look at the difference from that to that. This is close. This is far. Now I'm going to put my bridge in. And I'm going to put my one hump in, my second hump in. And a lot of bridges in Japan, old-fashioned ones, they don't have a guard, you know, like a handle, handrail on them. They're just these cool little humped bridges that go over. Now, of course, I need my pathway that leads off. Now I'm going to make my house over here. Square. We're not going to do anything fancy, just a square old house, okay? And then remember, what I said about that little slant, that little curve. See how that little curve just automatically just starts making it look like it's an Asian architecture. I'm going to give myself a round door, a little door handle, maybe even a round window up here. Now my door, my pathway, I'm going to go to my bridge again. Starts off skinny, ends up wider. Now all I have to do now is put in a little suggestion of my my, and I'm starting off like small, and then as I get closer, do you see how my line gets a little bit more wiggly and a little bit wider? That's because the stuff that's growing here is bigger than the stuff that's growing way up there. So I'm just going to put in a suggestion of a plowed field. If I wanted to, then I could go in and I could put some, some plant material in here. Maybe it's a rice field. Now the last thing we put in my picture, well besides the sun or the moon, Put some clouds. I'm just putting crazy clouds in here. And then for my tree, I'm going to give myself a craggly old tree, like an older tree that's kind of bent a little bit. So here's my trunk. Look, it's wider, and there are my roots. Don't forget the roots. My tree comes up, and I'm going to split it a little bit. Remember when I've talked about trees? It's all about the V's when it comes to the trees. Look at V, 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 V. It's all about the V's. Now I'm just going to put in the bushy part of my tree. There we go. Now this is a very simple line drawing, but it has all the elements that we need to create a full landscape. But if you're like me, you really like color. So I took my line drawing, and then I used magic markers. And I used the magic markers to outline my areas that I was going to be painting, like my river here. And do you know why I have orange in my water? Is it because I have orange water? No. I have orange in my water because look what color my sky is. My sky is like a yellow orange, and water reflects the color of the sky. That's why a lot of people see blue oceans, because it's reflecting a blue sky, but the sky is not always blue. So here you see I used a couple different shades of green. I got a, a lighter green down here, more yellowy green. My trees are a darker green. And your mountain can be any color you want. In winter, it's covered in snow, it would be white. It can be brown, gray, whatever color you like. And you can see we have this like long format. So his name is Hokusai, and he was an artist from Japan a long time ago. And this is a landscape inspired by him. I hope you had fun learning how to make a landscape inspired by the artist Hokusai. If you make some art, we'd be happy to maybe share it for you. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again for another class on art inspiration.